Hi everyone, today we are going to take a look at my approach on creating custom sub assemblies. Here I have uh, four different examples, which, which I use almost every day, and we are going to check them out and tear them basically apart. So yeah, let's start with the easiest one. This one is a carriageway, I, I named it carriageway one. It basically has all the layers possible that we can have in road construction. Simple as that. As you can see, we have all the all the paves, all the bases, all the sub bases, filling material. So yeah, simple as that. Well, how I made it? Let's check it out. Here we have a sub assembly composer. First thing that I usually do with my custom sub assemblies, I make the enumeration groups. So what does that mean? Let's check it out. Uh, right here we have the lane super elevation, which uh, nine nine items right here. This one is for the super elevations. Basically, I can define super elevations and attach them to to basically the layers that I need. So how does this one work? Let's get back to my sub assembly. And for example, I have the option right here. Let me close that one. Make it wider. If I can make that there you go. So what how does that work? So basically we have a lane super elevation and it's it has none so right now it's defined by this uh, default slope right here if i make it minus four it's going to be minus four if it's minus two it's minus two simple as that but now we can uh, for, for instance we have to change the slopes depending on the region or for instance so i can define these on which column it should be on. So here's the alignment. Here's the table editor. So basically right now, if I click on my sub assembly and choose lane super elevation, left lane inside, then every, th every single, every information that has to do in uh, that was more lag now. <laughs> uh, everything that has to do right now with the lane super elevation, uh, it's all the info that the assembly will get or the corridor is going to be from the uh, left lane inside column. So any value that you type here will define the lane super elevation. Simple as that. But for instance, you can choose any other option for example left lane outside so every number that you're going to uh, type here in a left outside lane will define the super elevation of the lane so simple as that since here in Estonia we have uh, different sub base elevations I chose to have a sub, sub base super elevation as well so for example on the left side of this sub assembly I have the left lane outside on the right one will be right lane outside, right? Yeah, and as the sub base, we can choose, for example, uh, left lane inside, and do the right lane inside. And as you can see, it will get the, the all the information from the uh, super elevation um, editor right here. So that's my approach on how I manage the super elevations of different layers. So yeah, and how does that work? Once again, you can define them right here. All the definitions can be found on the help page, on the Autodesk help page. So yeah, as you can see, all the possible columns that you have in the editor is written right here. 
and one of them is just none if it, if you would like to have the default value and for the sub base it's the same thing right here i start my sub assembly with uh, super elevation so basically grade to double and right here i have the expression basically if i not if i don't choose the uh, default value for instance for the table editor it's going to if i don't choose here yeah, if it's, it's going to have the value of the default slope that i can define uh, that i can define here in uh, input output parameters lane default slope and if i chose an ed uh, column in the editor tab then it's going to get the values from the uh, editor tab so simple as that and for the sub base it's the same thing but right here i have the other definition as well as right here so yeah simple as that and that's how i start every single um, my assembly with the definition of the super elevation so it be might it's going to be much easier later on to define or to use super elevation in your in your corridor designs so yeah after the super elevation i have this small decision right here it's a speed bump so basically with the speed bump i have this yes or no um thing right here so basically if there's no if there's no speed bump in the region i have no and if, if there is a speed bump there is a speed bump simple as that but now there can be various uh, speed bumps right and as you can see the speed bump you can have the elevation assigned you can get the elevation from the profile so you can really you can define the height of it and all the slopes just by the profile as well i have here a speed bump and a curb cross section for instance if you have a curb right here we usually ha then have the speed bump go just uh, next to the curb so it's going to be one block if there is no curb you have the slope right here from uh, asphalt i defined it as a speed bump but you can define it as as you want right <laughs> Every code, every link code, still you can define but as you like. I have just defined it in my way. So yeah, here's the decision, speed bump, no or yes. If it's true, we're going to next points. If not, it's going. we have this going through all the speed bump thing. And when we're done, here's the decision as well as the crop, crop, uh, cross section. After all the decision is made, we are going to back to the lane, creating the lane itself and all the construction. So it's nothing special about the other layers. It's kind of repetitive things. I usually start my sub assembly by creating a bunch of uh, auxiliary points and auxiliary links to have a better idea what it's, what it's going to have and how it's going to look. So it's much easier to edit these things than the physical points later on. So I usually make the auxiliary points links first. After that, I start uh, making the lanes and everything that I need to have the construction made. For example, I have these pave shapes right here, nothing special. I kept moving some base shapes, nothing special as well, just static construction basically right here i have the fmet fmet for me stands for the filling material elevation uh, basically depending on how much material would you like to have excavated you can define them by uh, making a profile for the excavation material so you have you can have the on the on the profile view the design um, design uh, profile as well as the excavation profile depending on the geology that has made before so yeah and what else well yeah there's, there's a decision if the 
if the filling material elevation is uh, wor working or not. If it's not working, then we have this uh, static uh, static cons no. St static uh, layer. We just you can define that the value of this uh, filling material by just a static value right here. For instance, zero point uh, three, and that's it. And by the end of the construction, I have the output. The, the point of the output is that I can build, for, uh, for, for example, a shoulder next on, or based on the output uh, values that come from uh, different points. So basically, for instance, we have the base one thickness. So if you check out the base one, it's from uh, P13 and P16. Why? So basically, I'm getting the value from these points, the thickness of the layer, to have the output value. I will show you later on how it works, but as you can see, I have every output value expect the uh, pavement because I can define them by uh, hand. But yeah, bases, sub base, and filling material thickness. And Easy construction as that. So let's keep moving. I'm gonna close this one. Uh, next one. We have the same carriageway, which all the same information that we had before right here. But now we have added the shoulders. Right there, right here we have shoulders. But as you can see, they have very different. Um, thickness of the layers, right? And that usually is a problem. How do we solve that? It's easy. As, you, as we talked before, we have the output values. So when we click on the assembly itself, we go to assembly properties. <coughs> right here we have construction on the left side and on the right side. So basically the shoulder one can get the, all the information from the carriageway one. How does it work? Well, as we talked before, we have the base one, for instance, and we can get the reference parameters. For instance, uh, base one, we click that yes, use, and as you saw, all the outputs that we had right here is now displayed in this get value from uh, column. So I would like to have base one information from base one, base two information from base two, and these ones as well, sub base one, sub base two, and filling material as well. I click apply, I click OK, and as you can see, all the thickness, all the layers are the same. And if you're going to have the super elevations, for instance, for the sub base or the lane, it's going to follow the values, output values from the carriageway. So all the info, all the thickness layers that you have right here from the carriageway will be used in here, in the shoulder. And simple as that. Yeah. I can uh, basically delete this one. And I can mirror on here on the right, yeah. It should get all the information from this carriageway as well. As simple as that. So, usually the shoulders and for instance, right, later on, we're going to talk about the um, sidewalks are the most uh, complicated ones because they, they have the they have slopes, they have different ways to construct the layers and so on. And so, yeah, depending on your region and how you make things right there, you should uh, follow the uh, standards and instructions in your region. But anyway, uh, let's take a look at the shoulder itself. <laughs> 